назад, 26 ноября, в «Украинской правде» вышло интервью. Вы говорили о перспективах Украины, о том, что нужно работать над реформами, чтобы приблизиться к вопросу о членстве ЕС. Что вы видите сейчас? На каком этапе Украины? И I have a feeling or a kind of recognition that uh, you did some progress already. We can speak about uh, macroeconomic stabilization and fiscal consolidation. Exchange change is under control, rate is under control, inflation is under control. A big success of your Minister of Finance is uh, restructuring of foreign debt and cooperation, very positive cooperation with International Monetary Fund. I, I have been reading that uh, you enjoyed the police reforms in bigger cities, uh, including Kharkiv. You did the slight progress in the regulation of energy prices, which is very painful, sensitive, but inevitable. And uh, there are also some positive uh, moves in uh, reduction of bureaucracy, state uh, agencies. But on the other side, uh, I have to admit that maybe ex expectation to run uh, was even higher to run in reform process. Look, I see two difficulties. The first is that the pace of reforms is not substantial enough. The pace? The pace. Ah, the pace. Первое это то, что ну, движение, шаг реформ, то есть та скорость, которыми они продвигаются, недостаточно. And the second problem in my mind is that there is a lack, a lack of communication with people. Это недостаточно информированность населения. We should speak more about the need of substantial reform in economy, especially in economy. Мы должны больше говорить о необходимости реформирования. Well, when I was reading the papers, preparing myself for visiting Kharkiv, I had a feeling sometimes that I am reading about Slovakia several years ago. Kharkiv region is very strong in heavy industry. You produce a lot of arms. <coughs> Fighters, aircrafts, Antonov, and many, many, many goods which are important for defense. But you are losing markets as Slovakia lost after the fall of communism because the, the world is changing and you are confronted with the problem of Russia.
very small illustration. 20 years ago, 20, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, Slovakia was a state power in, pro, in producing of, of arms. But we produced no passenger car. In this day, in this day, situation is completely opposite. So we should communicate in, we should communicate in Kharkiv, in Kiev, in Lviv, in Dnipropetrovsk with the public, with people. Вы являетесь советником президента Порошенко. Насколько он прислушивается, его команда, к тому, что вы говорите, и ряд других специалистов, которые входят в, 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 в организацию по, по, по реформам, которые возглавляет Саакашвили? Look, I am in a, in a little bit of delicate situation. From one side, I represent a European NGO. Я сейчас нахожусь в несколько деликатной ситуации. С одной стороны, я представляю неправительственную организацию европейцев. Willing to communicate with the people. И очень хочу общаться с людьми. Uh, with business community, with students, with the young generation. С молодым поколением, со студентами. To avoid a little bit everyday politics. Uh, ну, избегая при этом, говорить о политике. Uh, don't to interfere a lot to domestic issues, if you understand. Но я не хочу вмешиваться, если вы понимаете, о чем я говорю, вмешиваться в местные процессы. On the other side, I take myself as the highest, the biggest friend of Ukraine. Я считаю себя самым лучшим другом Украины. And I want, I want to be open and, and honest towards you. Я хочу быть открытым и честным с вами. This is why I can tell you that I am not very happy in these days. Я могу вам сказать because because a year ago I hoped that the things will run faster decentralization tax reforms privatization many other reforms that the pace of reforms the political leadership of the country, the ability to communicate, to communicate the reforms with the public is not substantial enough. Как Словакия вышла из политической изоляции и экономической ситуации? Хотелось бы слышать ваши секреты. Yeah, you are right. In summer 1997, Slovakia was labeled by the U.S. Secretary of State as the black hole of Europe. This is this is this is true. Да, это правда. В 97 году Словакию назвали черной дырой Европы. And this is also true if you look at uh, Eurostat figures. At Slovakia, uh, Eurostat, Eurostat agency figures. You can see that Slovakia is number one in Eurozone in respect of GDP growth. Can you, can you imagine? So I am really a happy man. Kagudalos. This is this is nothing uh, like a miracle. Political courage and the will to change things. I jumped into politics because in communism I was a citizen of the second class. My parents were teachers. But they were not allowed to teach because they were believers. And it was not only the question of my, of my biography or CV. This was also the question of my, my conviction 
that we need a competition in the country. Ну, это был не, не, сколько, ну, не только вопрос моей биографии, но и моего убеждения, что нашу страну нужно менять коммунизм. I jumped into politics. Я начал, ну, вош, вошел в политику. Not because I wanted to be rich. Не только, ну, не для того, чтобы стать богатым. But because I, I, I had a real dream to change the country. Ну, у меня была мечта изменить мою страну. For me. Для себя. And even more for my children. I remember every day how, how nervous I was when my, when my ministers hesitated to do some steps which were painful, it means unpopular. So the secret, the secret is very simple. I invited the best people to join me. The best reformators in the country. I defended them. I shoulder whole responsibility on my shoulders. And this is very simple. This is the secret. The, the secret. Political leadership, political conviction. A part of reforms. A part of reforms, madam. If you have, if you have energy prices, which are subsidized heavily by the state, do you know what, what does it mean? That poor people are paying for rich people. Not, это несправедливо. So, it, from one side, it is, it is very easy to misuse the regulation of prices. Потому что цены выходят очень высоко. Но деньги надо использовать for, for poor people. If the prices are subsidized by the state, коррупция. So let's deregulate the prices. Why? Why we deregulate the prices here in Ukraine on three, four steps? Overnight? Not corruption. But the, not corruption completely. Not, not, but we eliminated a lot corruption via, via deregulation. Because the private private capital is more careful about property. So, so all reforms should be oriented on uh, higher competitiveness. For business friendly environment. On privatization, and uh, suddenly, not overnight, but step by step, we create a space in which it is not easy to corrupt or to be corrupted. So, if I recommend to deregulate as much as possible. If I advise to privatize as much as possible, I am calling not only for a better competition, for creating of new job, I am calling also for, for the fight against corruption. So the miracle is very simple, political leadership and reforms. Сейчас 
разрабатывается несколько концепций реформы, но еще чиновники не договорились, еще ничего не понятно. Хотелось бы услышать, что бы вы посоветовали Украине, возможно, в Словакии тоже сталкивались с проблемой вот неудачных условий для ведения бизнеса и как с этим справлялись. Посмотрите, три вещи are needed. Reforms, reforms and reforms. It is very, it is very easy. Taxation. If you have crazy tax system, which is not transparent, which is very complicated, which is very expensive, in which it is possible uh, to organize tax evasion, to speculate, the result cannot be nice. One of the best reforms, something like made in Slovakia, was our tax reform. We did a lot of changes, not only in the level of taxation, but also inside of the system as such. To make it very easy, very simple, less bureaucratic, and more motivating people. Absolutely. It is possible. My first government was very broad, from the left to the right, former communists, former dissidents. The, the Slovaks, the Hungarians, believers, atheists. И мужчины, и женщины. А приглашенных экспертов было много из-за рубежа, вот как сейчас в Украине? No, no. I, I will, no, I will, I will go back uh, in a minute, but I want to express that the first government was very broad. And the situation was very difficult. So we have been using the first government for stabilization. A lot of the regulation banking restructuring and banking uh, recovery. We privatized and we prepared the ground for modernization. And the major reforms were done at the beginning of my second term. Also because the coalition was, was uh, narrower, center-right coalition. So we were able to run very quickly at the time. So three years for stabilization. Three years for modernization. Making long story short. Foreigners. We were listening carefully, but it was not my idea to believe that somebody else from abroad can solve my responsibility. My advice today, after one year of this uh, discussion of, with uh, Daily Pravda is, that you should be focused on political leadership. On communication of reforms. But also last but not least on ownership of reforms. Ownership of reform? Yes, ownership of reforms. I, I am very nervous when I am reading in your newspaper or some uh, members of Verkhovna Rada uh, are telling me 
или когда ну, члены Верховной Рады мне говорят. We need a higher pressure from abroad. Pressure from abroad? А? Говорят, что ну, нам нужно больше, чтобы ну, как, больше давления оказывали из-за границы. This is crazy. Ну, это неправильно. It cannot work. Это не сработает. Это не this, is, this is your job. Это ваша работа. To decide whether you want to be modernized or not. Don't create a, a crooked picture. That we are pushing you to, to the hands of America or to the West. We are not pushing you. We are happy that you are you have decided. But the decision is yours. Но решение это только ваше. А, Миклош, а, тогда в этой связи у меня возникает вопрос. Вы знаете, видите, что много иностранных специалистов <coughs> работают на государственных должностях в Украине. А, предлагали ли вам занять какую-то должность и готовы ли вы были это сделать? Нет, не предлагали меня, and I would not accept. Потому что я не был, uh, I was not elected. I was not running for the elections. А, потому что это была бы должность, которую я получил бы. Ну, это, это, это была бы не выборная должность. Because I'm not able to bear responsibility. Потому что тогда я не могу ну, нести ответственность за это, если меня не, не избрали. Because I will not stand vis-a-vis -vis to the people on the square in Kharkiv to respond what I promised and what I fulfilled. This is not fair. It cannot... It, it, it cannot work by my mind. Похожая ситуация в каком-то смысле была в начале 90-х с Россией, когда России помогали, в том числе европейские страны. Но мы видим, что это никак принципиально не повлияло. И есть мнение, что отсутствие плана помощи стране наподобие того, который был после войны, да, он привел к тому, что привел сейчас. Не думаете ли вы о том, что вот такое мягкое э, сотрудничество с э, Украиной в конечном счете может привести к э, краху реформ, которые э, заложены вот, были э, с, с окончанием Майдана? Фантастик question. Замечательно. Really a fantastic question. Maybe yes. Maybe yes. We should be very careful. Going to the point, I am going back to your previous question. Look, it is very normal to advise. Normal. Very normal to advise. If Mr. President Poroshenko wants to listen to me, I come overnight to Kiev. And I will do my best to recommend, to advise. But the decision must be adopted only by elected people. You see? I will not allow to mix responsibility. Do you feel how sensitive the issue is? We can share experience. We can advise. We can recommend. But the decision making must be Ukrainian. Only Ukrainian. This is this is this is the ownership. Соответственно, Европейский Союз имеет все шансы, если им достаточно поможет Украине, получить очередной авторитарный режим. I met 20 people this morning from business. My, my, my expression is good. I, I have met already many people in Lviv, in Kiev. You have fantastic people. So I am sure that if you are able to, to stick to the democratic rules, 
you will prevail sooner or later with our assistance. If you wish. Большое спасибо, всего доброго.